what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel sorry the laundry is going off like every freaking day in the background but today we're going to be working on the turbo element build once more and this is going to be like the final thing we need to do before we put it on a dyno which i hope is in a couple of days it's i pulled up like 20 minutes ago and he's already tearing back the flooring in the element so we can get to the fuel basket but i did mention in a previous video that we have all of the lines and fittings we're going to need to build a feed line from the fuel basket to the fuel filter. He wants to go E85 this time around, so we're switching from the rubber to the PTFE style, so that way the E85 does not deteriorate the rubber hoses. And we're also gonna be installing a relay system. Let me show you guys real quick. This right here is the relay system for the Walbro 450. The Walbro 450 is already in the car, and this relay system is gonna give the power it needs to give us the full potential of the pump for when we go and turn it up on the dyno. So everything is already wired up. It's just a matter of finding a home location for it and then connecting everything into place. So I'm gonna take you guys away from the laundry and let's get to the car and show you all what we're gonna be doing today. So SI's Element K24 Turbo. We did this probably like two months ago and he's been driving on that Noah's map, huh? Yep. yep that map has been running cherry, dude. Yeah, so. Yeah, shout out to the homie No Miss, man. And um, the car has been running fine. Uh, AFR, fuel pressure, everything has been working well. But before we put it on the dyno, we want to ensure that we have everything ready to rock and roll. So this right here is the factory fuel line. And you can see it has the adapter. Shout out to being our fittings. And it goes straight into the filter, which goes around to the rail. And then it goes to the regulator into a return system that we added probably a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we're not going to be changing this out to P PTFE stainless and uh, SI is over here in the back already tearing apart the interior to get to that basket which should be under that and uh, we're gonna get right to it I'm gonna go ahead and grab this we need my little pry bar and a rubber hammer uh, SI already took off the cover but you can see right here we have the fuel basket and before we even take that off which is what these tools are for we're gonna build our feed line so the feed line is pretty straightforward because it is a push lock style and we're just gonna remove that adapt the fitting onto this barb and then we'll build our dash 6 from here to the fuel filter PTFV dash 6 we have the tube adapter for the basket for the fuel pump and we have a dash six ptfe 90 and a straight uh, i want to say this is all we're going to need i was thinking about getting a 45 but we won't know until we actually put it in the car and figure out our angles but i'm going to go ahead and build the first line and then we're going to go and measure it all out before we build the second line the 90 is going to be at the fuel basket so we're going to do this one first insert the sleeve into the line remove the tape Normally, this is applied before cutting the AN line. I'm having a brain fart right now, but take this little insert thing right here. You want to spread the line itself out, not with your fingers. You want to insert this onto the PTFE line itself. Make sure it's nice and flush to the end there. You can kind of shove it down on the table. Make sure that's nice and flush. I don't know how well you guys can see this because the sun is behind you guys beaming down. But anyways, this fitting is a push lock style. You pretty much just pinch the clips of the uh, plastic that's locking it into the barb. And then once you do that, you pretty much just kind of slide this out. You are gonna get a little bit of fuel coming out of here, obviously, because the car just shut off like probably 10 minutes ago. And uh, that releases it from the barb here. And then you remove this piece of plastic that, um, is part of locking the push lock in gently pry it over it comes off you can kind of plug it back in and we're going to push this off to the side we're definitely going to clear this line out because i'm not entirely sure we're going to remove it completely out of the car but we're just going to push it off to the side for right now the fitting here is a 3 8 to uh, tube adapter 
and this is a different style we kind of covered this before when we built the return line and the feed line uh, that's currently on the car now and this is a little different from what I'm used to but it's a much nicer design as far as I've you know experienced it you twist this piece off you have this um, first adapter that goes on to the hard line like uh, okay well how do I do this oh boy this is a smaller fitting So it's like I got the fuel basket out of his fuel tank and we're going to be installing the bulkhead probably obviously in an area that's not going to be in the way of the other fittings which this one's going to have a two fitting coming off of it and then it's going to be a 90 so obviously we've shown you guys earlier that uh, we didn't have to correct two fitting and tell me why the homie being our fitting showed up in his truck and he dropped off the uh, two wire bulkhead fitting that we needed which is I believe it's over there somewhere over the rainbow or something. Brian stopped by to drop off this bulkhead which you attach to your uh, fuel top hat and this allows you to upgrade the wires to your fuel pump. We are running the Walbro 450 and uh, we want to put the relay system on it. So shout out to Brian for this and he also dropped off a four port boost solenoid for your car so we can turn it up from that small spring that we have in the gate. We're going to do all of that later but for right now. We're gonna be installing the bulkhead and the wiring. Now, I also showed you guys that we don't have the correct fitting and uh, what turns out to be was the bag was correct. Three eighths for the tube fitting, except in the bag had the fitting for the smaller size, like a five sixteenths or something like that, or five some odds. But anyways, um, Brian took the fitting back home. He's gonna ship me one tomorrow at the end of the day, you can tune the car with the factory fuel system on E85 as long as you consistently drive it. And then we'll swap over to the PTFE-6 later, which again, is pretty straightforward to do. Right now, let's go ahead and figure out where we're gonna mount this bulkhead because if you guys remember when we installed this one, we had to shave all of this. So that way it's a clear shot for the fitting to completely tighten down nice and flat. So let's figure out where we need this and start our cutting. So we have the bulkhead on and it is secured down right here inside the basket. And uh, now we're gonna do the wiring. So what I'm gonna do is inside the basket, we do have the quick disconnect inside uh, the tank. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this out so that way when we do the relay system, two wires going in, and if we need to remove the basket later down the road, the wire is, there's no there's no connection here to disconnect from and the relay would come out with the basket. So if I move this to the outside, I can always disconnect it. So that way we can separate this from the relay system. Simple enough, I'm gonna go ahead and just snip off um, the power wire here. We're gonna take this entirely out of the basket and then I'm also gonna snip this one more time here so we can take this plug and move it out of the basket itself. So I'm gonna leave enough room to add wire two, probably right there. I'm gonna add some new wires to this here and this is what's gonna go through the bulkhead, right? Most people will tell you to use butt connectors here but I honestly truly hate butt connectors. I'm gonna add some flux on here. And then we're gonna solder these wires together. Listen to that sizzle. Sounds like we're cooking bacon, but we're not, you know? Add some tube shrinking. Okay, do the same on the other side. Like Adele, you know, hello from the other side. I mean, I have flux infused solder, but adding that extra flux helps so much. You guys maybe think I'm crazy using my torch next to a fuel pump. 
now we got these two together I'm gonna go ahead and feed this out of the basket now I didn't use two red wires so before I entirely um, closes all together I'm gonna go ahead and put some electrical tape on the black which is supposed to be ground that is this guy here mark this as ground pull the wires through the provided grommet slide the grommet all the way down into the bulkhead itself keep some slack on the fuel pump side now you can install the fitting that screws down onto the bulkhead and what it's going to do is going to click these clicking compressing thingamabob so that way it can squeeze the seal to ensure that the seal between the wires are nice and tight simple enough listen to the clicks you honestly don't even need a tool for this you can just click it until it bottoms out and we should have a really nice tight seal and a little loose on the fuel pump side now we have the plug on the outside all of the wires are soldered together this thing is ready to go back into the tank so this is the plug that goes onto the fuel basket and i've already pinpoint which one goes to the fuel pump the signal wire is the yellow green stripe and then the black is obviously the ground and because we pulled both of them through the bulkhead i'm not going to deep pin the pin from the plug because obviously we can't use that anyway so i'm just going to pull it back maybe an inch and a half and then i'm actually going to cut the wire from the plug itself this one here and ground would be this one here right i'm gonna go ahead and put these clips back on this one here you don't want to forget that you don't need to take it off if you're not taking out the terminal um but yeah that goes on there and then now we have our two wires which is going to be signal for the relay the original power wire to the pump and then we're going to have the ground which is going to go through the plug because we pulled the ground out here and I'm gonna go ahead and just solder these together. Now the relay, we're gonna keep it inside the car instead of running it underneath the car just for easy accessibility. And the relay system is right here. So we're gonna put it right here underneath the center console, out of sight, out of mind. And because this thing is not bolted anyways, relay system fully accessible. So I'm gonna go ahead and just solder these guys up real quick. The relay has four wires coming out of it. We have one for 12 volt switch and we have a ground and then we have a 12 volt constant this is going to go to either the fuse box or the battery and then we have the uh power wire that goes to the fuel pump this is going to go to the other end of the plug here that powers the fuel pump the yellow that's on the factory harness that goes to the fuel pump is going to go to the 12 volt switch and then obviously we're going to ground this to a bolt on the chassis and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do all the other ones first before I do the power wire to the fuse box. Get some flux on here. Get some solder on it as well. Flux. So we have our signal and our power. We have our plug to easy quick disconnect. We have our bulkhead and we're pretty much done in this vicinity. And now we're gonna go ahead and move over to the relay under the console and route our ground and power wire. Cut a little slit in the cover here and I also electrical taped the power and the signal wire so it's not touching bare metal. And the ground for the relay right here the ground is actually going to a 10 mil bolt that is securing the bracket to the chassis and it is exposed metal. This bracket is bolted down in many points of the floorboard so I'm sure we'll have a good ground connection there. So the last thing we have to do is figure out where we're going to be drawing power from to power the relay. So 
I think we're gonna go to the fuse box just because we're kind of in the interior instead of putting the relay underneath the uh, paneling here to be underneath the car. If it was underneath the car, I would have routed this all the way to the fuse box where um, I could draw 12 volts from because it goes to the battery directly. And uh, yeah, on Blueberry, it is coming from the fuse box as well. So I need to locate the fuse box, figure out which one has a uh, 12 volt with key on, and then we're probably gonna terminate this and plug it in there. I found one slot on the fuse box that is a constant 12 volt, and I'm not worried about it being a constant 12 volt because the relay won't even kick on or draw the power until we kick the key on. The signal wire here from the factory harness will trigger the relay, and then it'll send power through. So. I have it connected to the fuse box for now just to make sure everything works before I cut everything to length. Go ahead and put the camera right at the uh, fuel basket. I'm gonna turn the key on and it should, it should turn on. Yeah. It's working. Check for leaks, we'll do it one more time. No leaks. All right, I'm gonna try to fire the car real quick. car is idling no leaks now we did take note that the car was reading 40 psi on the fuel pressure regulator and then it was 45 without the vacuum and right now vacuum on you're sitting at about you're like at 53 my boy so we're gonna have to adjust that down to where it was before so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my allen key and my socket or uh, wrench and turn his regulator down. All right, we're at 40. So we have Herb over there working on his uh, tailgate and Isai just finished putting his interior back together and this thing is ready to rock and roll. So the only thing left is just this center console here for the bottom subwoofer, which I need to find some tabs for. But other than that, power wire, relay system for the Wobble 450, all said and done. Fuel pressure regulator is adjusted. Hopefully the AFR is not too whacked out and hopefully we get this thing on a dyno real soon. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go fishing because we spent more time with Isai's element and we just had a little dilemma with like, um, fittings and stuff so we were sitting around trying to figure out uh, the best solution to go about it and then we decided obviously that we're not going to run the line now we can always change it later he can tune on e85 with the stock feed line that's in the car now and then once the car is all said and done we can just change the line after the fact before we cap out this video um i do want to kind of tinker with the h2b crx a little bit i've kind of cleaned this car off camera i want to say i did it off camera i don't remember recording it but i took the seats out i pressure washed them and i dried them in the garage for the last week or so the interior i scrubbed everything down i really want to get back to work on this car and i've said it a thousand times for the last like three years or so but i have a deadline for this car i think i mentioned it or maybe it might have been in a live stream or something but the new goal for this car is to get it ready for race wars. S1 is coming from Florida to Sacramento Raceway for race wars for two days. I believe it's August 18th and 19th. I'm not entirely 100% on it because they switched the days. It's now Friday, Saturday instead of Saturday, Sunday. It's kind of weird on the scheduling, but uh, they're going to be out here for both days. I'm going to try to be out there with them for two days. And I wanted to display the S1 sponsored h2b all-wheel drive crx while they're here so that is the goal for this car get it ready for race wars and me setting this timeline really just makes me want to get this thing that much more closer to being done even though it's really close but you guys see there's no moldings and stuff so hopefully in the next couple of days we're going to be like color sanding this polishing it out get all the moldings and everything reinstalled back into the car get the wheels on hopefully try to get it on the alignment rack try to get it tuned really i'm really wanting to finishing up this car now um you know i i read the comments you guys you guys are still chopping me up but you know i'm working on this at my own pace and that's just what it is you can't tell me otherwise you know and um me setting the race wars goal is definitely gonna get me going 
to getting this car more and more complete so uh we're gonna throw the seats into the car and then there's one more thing i'm gonna install and then um you know what i'm saying like we're just gonna hang out a little bit herb's still here his size over there putting the seats in and i'm actually gonna grub real quick because they ate already it's delicious it was delicious and i'm about to eat because i didn't really eat anything all day shout out to si man that boy's a chef cooked up some fire food from his um this is kobe kitchen yeah. kobe kitchen man y'all remember that vlog when me and her went out there man that was a good one for sure her's on that live stream right now you know it i want to give a big shout out to si while i was grubbing up the food he cooked us us meaning herb as well uh he's been putting in the work on installing my seat for the crx thank you si i appreciate that and the food was fire bro that thing was gone before i even started man look at this nice and clean no more mold had all that nasty mold that was in here sorry it's kind of dark obviously it's super laid out and the lights all the way over there but um yeah he's butting it up and i do want to install a steering wheel that was sent over from bull boost performance Woo. Damn. Woo. shout out to bull boost performance link in the description <laughs> below a couple of <laughs> anti-stock club let's go this is suede and this is one of the better uh, steering wheels that they have on their line i did get a different one that i sold in the all-wheel drive crx the red car which was actually a red steering wheel but i kind of like it a little more sleek with the black and everything so this steering wheel feels really nice i mean it looks it looks pretty cool too they do provide hubs as well and i want to say this is for the crx because it is the much larger hole compared to like maybe the dc eg ones which i have as well but it's kind of it's kind of tucked up there somewhere i do have this nrg slim quick release big shout out to brian the homie hooked it up with this because he's no longer driving hondas and he was like yo i got this if you want it i'm like shit say less man so we're going to be installing the slim quick release with the slim short hub provided by bull boost and the bull boost steering wheel so let's go ahead and get into the car and uh take off that stock one thank you to si he already took off the 19 millimeter bolt that holds the steering wheel into the steering column this should just pop right on out of here just like that bye bye stock steering wheel i'm going to use this label right here in the front to align the straightness because the car is parked straight in and the steering wheel was obviously straight beforehand this car still needs to go to an alignment rack so even if it's off we can always adjust it later put that on three because we're going to give it like 30 uggas Go ahead and put the steering wheel away for right now because obviously we're not driving the car, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hang it up here with the rest of the cars that I don't drive. You know, all the suede steering wheel. Sheesh. So today, guys, uh, totally shifted. We were supposed to do your fuel feed system, re uh, relay system, and then go fishing with this guy, Yo. right? And then what had happened was we didn't have all the right parts. So then the day kind of ran away a little bit. Uh, we were kind of shifting around. Herb was working on his car, working on inside's car. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just work on my car a little bit. So we did a little bit of work on this car as well. You guys just seen that in the previous clips. And uh, at the end of the day, you know what the saying is? Uh, any progress is better than no progress. I already know, it, man. So <laughs> today was still, um, we still made progress regardless of the fact. And um, you know, it's plenty of many other days for us to go fishing. Um, but for the most part, SI's car is ready for the dyno. We're just waiting here back to when we uh, can get to the dyno. And obviously, like I told you guys, we'll be there to tune this car. It's gonna be on E85 this time around, That's and we're most here. definitely gonna try to see how much we can push out of that K24A4. Um, I am probably going to get back on the H2B CRX tomorrow because like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to go get some tires and try to get the wheels on. I'm going to try to make some more progress on the body of the car and really get it that much more closer to being done because we are now set to, to take this car to Race Wars August 18th, 19th at Sacramento Raceway. So um, we are going to wrap up the video right here. It is getting kind of late. I got a lot more things to do here in the garage before I head inside and I'm dreading the long ass video that I got edited tonight. but. I'm doing it for you guys because this is what I love to do and I love sharing everything with you guys. So we're gonna wrap it up right here. I hope you guys enjoy a little bit of update on some of the cars you see here on the channel. Hopefully some fishing content will ensue here real soon. I think I think I have some fishing clips I might 
throw in here? I don't, I don't know. Anyways, but if you guys want to stick around to see some more progression updates on any of these cars on the driveway, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to Herb. Shout out to SI for the food and everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>